Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, co-host of the CUBE, and we have two great guests, Prashant Jagannathan, Technical Director of Global Alliances at Catalogic, and Vaughn Stewart, CUBE alumni, good friend of the CUBE, Vice President of Technology at Pure Storage. Guys, welcome to this CUBE conversation. Good to see you. John, it's great to be here. Nice to see you, mate. So nice you're on the road. You guys are a growing startup. You guys are doing great. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you. So you guys, uh, Catalogic, we've been covering you guys, and you guys have been can, can busting out. Still, in my opinion, not like well known, but you well known. <laughs> you're the most unknown, well known company because you have a really awesome solution. Pure Storage, you guys are known. You just went public, earnings. Again, another successful quarter. Uh, congratulations to, to the team there. Again, everyone's like, oh, Pure Storage. Blah, blah. You guys continue to, to demystify the marketplace with performance. Congratulations, what's the why, what's going on? Yeah, so, so thanks, so um, we, we, again, we just uh, announced our, our quarterly earnings, another great quarter. Uh, we've, we've accomplished uh, 3,350 customers, 25% of those are in the Fortune 500, uh, t over 25% of our revenue comes from cloud service providers, be it SaaS, PaaS, you know, hosted private cloud. Uh, but the, really the key of, of, of our success has been uh, not the performance of, of Flash, which I think a lot of folks assume, it's been about reinventing the operational model through simplicity, right? We're, we, we'd like to talk about uh, being you know, eff effortless, efficient, and evergreen. And so uh, that's kind of our tagline to help you know, customers put their data to work. There's certainly a cloud transformation going on. I want to get your guys' thoughts because one of the things that our, our team at Wikibon and our editorial team at SiliconANGLE are focused on is really three major pillars we're seeing uh, that are powering a whole new set of applications, okay. cloud native, whatever you want to call them. That is obviously cloud computing, which is a combination of on-premise, on hybrid, yeah. and then public. Um, big data, which is now I, AI in machine learning, and then IoT. Those are like really the, under, the underpinnings that's transforming the data center. Uh, and this is causing a lot of opportunity for app developers on top, and you're seeing all the, the key software uh, markets just completely being disrupted and transforming. So I got to ask you guys, uh, what does this mean to your relationship? Because you guys have a partnership, okay? so. How does that fit into that industry trend? Can you talk about the partnership that you guys have together? Sure, I'll let you go first. Sure. So uh, we first started engaging uh, almost a year ago. Right. Um, you know, there was a lot of uh, relationships based out of the, out of the valley from previous, uh, previous uh, relationships, or right. I should say employment. It's a small in the industry, the storage industry. Yeah. It's a small, <laughs> yeah. we, we all know each other. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and so at that time, you know, even more than in your current opening statements, right, Catalogic was really flying under the radar, right? A powerful set of tools, how to header, you know, how to bring in a, a copy data management and, and data protection, protection scheme into a heterogeneous storage infrastructure. And, you know, they, 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 they've kind of right, bridged this gap between I'm software enabled, software defined, giving you a control plane, leveraging all of the offload and acceleration capabilities within the hardware infrastructure, and at the end of the, end of the day, what, what we were able to identify is this fills a huge gap within the market, whether customers are looking to, to convert their virtual infrastructure into a private cloud, meaning it can be self-service, right, it, by the end users, or you know, consumerized, if you will. They can better accelerate their development teams, um, you know, and develop a more DevOps-centric model, right, that, that lets these teams uh, start to work in a more agile infrastructure. Uh, and, and ultimately start to embrace better hybrid storage technologies by making data protection just a native element within their, their on-prem and extending it into the cloud. Rashawn, what right. are some of the use cases? Because this really highlights the demand for faster solutions. Right. Not necessarily buying a new tool or something else. I mean, people got to use what they got. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for, first to start with the, the integration, right? So we are a very synergistic relation. Um, Catalogic is an orchestration engine, so it it leverages in place existing infrastructure to automate certain operations. So, so these operations include, answering your question on use cases, include um, DevOps, include uh, test dev automation, uh, and also data protection and disaster recovery management. So it makes it use case driven and also for different industries where they're looking for a centralized, a heterogeneous automation tool that can perform a lot of operations but not reinventing it, so you don't need to move it to another appliance to deliver these use cases, but leverage the, the services that the storage and the hardware already provides. I mean, test dev is obviously low hanging fruit. That's kind of been around for a while. We've heard um, a lot of the top cl cloud guys say that. We're hearing, um, as we go out through a variety of the events, 
real practitioners and end users putting production workloads into the cloud and really bringing the hybrid architecture in there, which impacts the storage and the pre-existing. Yeah. Outside of test and dev, I mean, I hear a lot about mission critical. Are you guys seeing that? Is that a use case? And then how do the people who are your customers deal with that pressure? Okay, move some mission critical workloads, make them work, what happens? Right, I mean, mission critical applications are, are what's actually driving, they are actually driving the purchasing um, point of the, the product itself. So uh, applications like if you take Oracle or SQL database, they are running on high performance storage on flash. And what these developers and, and app owners are looking for is, I have my production data, but I need to access that data. They cannot touch production. So they end up using a copy of data which is driven by backup tools. They back up the data to some tape or, or some disk appliance, and they perform a, a full restore operation, which is slower uh, and doesn't give them data access right away. Um, so with Catalogic, what we are trying to do is leverage these production databases and then quickly spin them up for uh, these mission critical applications, they, they get a, a data protection locally on the storage, and these copies can be spun up instantly from an end user for self-service. They, they're looking for access, quick access to data, which sometimes the storage administrators cannot give them right away, but we provide the yeah. tools and the, uh, and the necessary components to give the users access to the data. Let me, let me add some color to, the, to, to this, because I, I, because I agree with what you said. I think when you look at, at, at what's occurring within mid-sized businesses and enterprises, which is really kind of where we sell to, right? We, we at Pure Storage, mm -hmm. we don't go into the small market. Uh, there is this macro desire from organizations to get their private cloud finalized, right? This transition from virtual to private mm -hmm. cloud. Because the end state of private cloud is then the to, to optimize IT resources mm -hmm. and start to move your people into areas of future investment, right? Meaning focus more on IOT, a mm -hmm. lot more on the analytics, whether it be ML or AI. Mm -hmm. And so when you take a step back and say, okay, now come from macro and let's talk about our two products, right? We make an all flash array. What was interesting about the introduction of our uh, flash array when we first brought it to market was it didn't start in, in tier two or tier three. It started mission critical tier one. Mm -hmm. in which you're in that space and you're dealing with some applications powered by an Oracle suite or on top of SQL Server, for example, there are a lot of steps that have to be taken to protect that data, right? I've got to call the application, Correct. I've got to <laughs> coordinate with the, with the um, hypervisor layer, the storage, and if I'm going to now start to automate this to bring a cloud-like experience to my end users, I've got to deal with compliance, operations, and security Concerns, right? I should say regulatory, right? Concerns. Right. Yeah, think of which, all the personas involved in this. Right, which means it may be a, a retention policy, it may be a, 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 a release um, the, the resources, it may be measuring the resource constraints, it may require data masking, mm -hmm. right? All of these elements that are above the storage layer, right, and above our great mm -hmm. performance and cloning engine, Catalogic manages for us, right? Mm -hmm. And they've got geocentricity to it. Is it on-prem? What country is it in? Is it off in the cloud? These are the elements when you say, I want, I want, to, I want to make a private cloud a, a cloud. It's where the hypervisor vendors have kind of left us So that's a gap. More, so that's right? a gap you're talking about, if I get your, get your thoughts on that, because, I mean, Wikibon just put out a survey um, just last month that through 2026, the true private cloud, they call it true private cloud, is going to be $237 billion. That speaks to the data center mm -hmm. kind of migration to cloud where you got true private cloud, which is essentially data center that has cloud-like features for mm -hmm. DevOps and private, hybrid cloud. But this mission critical question comes back to it because as a VP of technology, you know, we've talked about storage in the past, but you know, databases in isolation are easy to deal with. But when you're dealing with production databases, this is a nightmare. No one wants to fool with them. Right. So talk about, I mean, how hard this is because most people don't kind of get like how complicated it is to <laughs> like kind of wrangle production databases to get something into production in like a true private cloud. R right, so so the, 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 like you said, production database, nobody wants to touch it because that's driving business and any, uh, anything to do with business, they, the developers don't want to touch it, the, the QA that, they call it no ops. No, no. Don't touch it. Don't touch Not it. Exactly. It's, it's <laughs> and they also want self-service too. They want no operational people involved as well. Right. And 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 that is part of the problem as well. So every time you're, the whole DevOps movement is you trying to combine the de developers and talk to the ops people. But but the true DevOps is 
the ops is not involved, just developer wants some access to it, they get it right away, right? So the ops people usually don't want to give access to developers for the production environment. Part of the reason because developers want to do a lot of different things with it. They want to do it uh, patch testing, uh, they might want to run queries against it, run analytics against it, use it for, for big data consumption. And if you do this against production database, not only are you degrading the performance of it, even if it's on flash, uh, you're performing operations that you don't normally mm -hmm. perform on a production database, which is why they need access to it in a self-contained environment, not directly on the production. And, and one of the values that uh, the private cloud can differentiate itself on today versus public cloud offerings is, is in the public cloud, there isn't an ability to make instant copies of production data. Right, you've got to be making backups that come out of one storage silo across yeah. the interconnects to another silo, and then when you want to clone, it's got to copy out of that silo. Right. So from a, an agility, a time to perspective, right, the cloud's not there on that construct yet, right? It's all based on software yeah. copies. In, in, in the model that, that Catalogic enables, whether it's pure storage or, or other storage partners that are within their portfolio of support, Right. We get to leverage these engines that are very mature and robust within the enterprise class storage arrays today right. Right, to, to deliver this agility and speed. And we find customers being very creative in how they're leveraging these technologies. I was sharing before we, we sat down, right? We, we have a customer that they've taken their legacy in environment, which is storing all these customer records and information in a relational database, and now they're leveraging it to say, let's make multiple copies of this database and run queries in parallel across multiple cloned instances mm -hmm. because they don't have the staff that knows how to adopt a Hadoop ecosystem. Today. All right, so let me see if I can put this together because um, the things I like to look at externally to what you guys are doing is some trends that, are, that I can point to. Um, Pure, your growth on terms of number is in the, is in the green, um, the competition's down. Um, so you're obviously in a yep. modernization kind of wave. People are buying your stuff and, and, and they're moving it in. But also seeing on the data protection side in, in the cloud, you're seeing kind of new startups emerging. I mean. You know, as I look around, there's a lot of startups reinventing data protection and backup and recovery for cloud. So you know, the pressure that the customers have is, I want the best of what I've been doing, mm -hmm. but yet I got to move to the cloud really quick. IT monitors, mo modernization, consumers, whatever you want to call it, it's happening. Mm -hmm. How do you guys work together to make that happen? Because I still got to get this new environment, but I got to make the production protection work. There's no four walls anymore. Right. I mean, and that, did I get this right? Oh yeah, yeah that, that is correct. So, so customers are moving to the cloud. They are, the, the, the notion of hybrid cloud exists in some, in some fashion, as in uh, they, are, they are running most of their mission critical applications on production and on faster performing arrays, but they are still moving their workloads into the cloud, so they have a mix of both. Uh, with a true data protection, you have to cover both these scenarios. The, the hybrid cloud model where you're taking care of data protection both on premises and also into the cloud. So with, with the cloud migration, now it becomes more important to understand and catalog the entire environment, to identify what's out there, are they protected, and are my users getting the right access to the right data? Um, so, so that's where um, Catalogic comes into the picture where it can provide a, a single global view into things of identifying these are your mission critical applications right there on premises, and here's the data in the cloud and not only drive data protection natively in the cloud, but I also like kind of give cloud people access to data that's on So you guys have a good fit with Pure that way, because they're exactly. hitting the large enterprises and then emerging modern enterprises with the store flash. Yeah. Yes. You guys kind of give some extensibility through that integration. Right. All right, so I got to ask you the, the tough question. Um, data masking and security, huge issues right now. Yes. Um, security in particular, there's no perimeter in the cloud. You guys know all about this on the storage side, on-prem is pretty well, well known, but still there's no perimeter even on-premise. Mm -hmm. How do you guys deal with security in your relationships? Um, that's a great question. Um, it's actually easier for me. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> Damn, a tough one. I wanted it to be a hard question. That wasn't a tough one. Uh, so data obfuscation or, or data masking is, is, a is a main ask for mission critical applications, right? So especially when you're talking about DevOps, giving access to data, you don't want to give access to production data that contains information like credit card info, social security number, uh, blood group of your firstborn, a kind of information that you, you want to keep private. Um, so Catalogic integrates with some of the data masking or obfuscation tools out there. Uh, so the, that's a great value add to the storage as well. So 
from a storage layer, you don't really know what's the content of the data, whereas Catalogic provides that information where it can take the database information and apply masking against it. And when we manage these snapshots, we provide uh, role-based access control against it. Okay. Uh, so an end user uh, will give them access to them for, for admins to do basic recovery, they can perform against the entire database, whereas a, a developer who needs access to a subset of the data will only get access or, or see the data that they that we allow them to see. Yeah. Okay, hard question then, I'll try to bring another one to you. Okay. Self-service is nirvana. Right. IT operations may, moving into higher value, cloud native developer. Mm -hmm. How do you guys see the progress of full self-service, scalable, horizontally scalable data, are you there now? Where, is this, where does that fit, that, that picture of full self-service? Uh, so no operations guys involved. So no operations guys involved is, is still See, in I Nirvana. stumped you. <laughs> right, <Yeah. laughs> uh, so it's still in Nirvana because it's, uh, it, it combines a couple of things, right? So one, um, if you want to give access to data, it, it has to be instant, and it doesn't have to be script driven. It has to be like either click of a button or leverage the existing tools that they have. Uh, and the other is how, how much can you give access? So in the sense that I have 15 developers and 15 developers are all asking for the same data and you need to have a performant storage that should be able to handle these multiple stream requests. Yeah, right? it, well, and, and, I, and I, think you're, I think you're speaking very eloquently about the technology, but I think you, you're, you're understating the whole nature of enabling the private cloud, right? Having it be yeah. self-service. There, there's a point in time when you first take that first 30 to 60 minutes to set up Catalogic and to register you know, into the authentication realms and the right. virtualization environment and the, the storage array. Okay, sure, that's overhead. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to spend some time with your team as the operation side of the house, defining your yeah. infrastructure policies. And you're probably going to go reach to talk to, again, right. this is DevOps. I'm going to go talk to the development teams and go talk to the regulatory folks. What are the requirements? Because does this data have to stay in country? What countries is it visible mm -hmm. for? There's some legwork up front. Right, yeah. What, what right. has to be mass based on what groups? And you set up Correct. these, these role-based policies. Once that's in place, that's no different than, now you have a service catalog. And, you, and you're right. showing up and you're like, hey, I'm John. You guys know I'm part of the Oracle team. You know, and so the developers have full access to that data. They can so program they get, with they it. They get the catalog. They get the catalog. And so, the so API we, set. Uh, okay. Exactly, so what, what we create is templates and these templates can be customized to a developer. So I, I have a financial services team that needs access to the financial service data. So we'll create templates that will include policies like, hey, this is the storage provision yeah. for it. This is the data, the mass data which contains the financials. And we'll give that template to the, yeah. the financial services team. And just for the audience, because I think we all grok this, but I want to make sure the audience gets this. The difference between what we're talking about and just saying, well, hey, I can clone a database virtual machine today and my, by my hypervisor, sure, but that's a manual process by the by the, the virtualization team, which is disconnected from the application. There needs to be an email. There's a meeting right. gets set up. People but have to weigh there's in. There's no data masking. There's no right. role-based access, access policy. There's no there's no termination of of the the resource right. policy, right? So you know we're sitting again and back in. Sure, virtualization gave us agility, but we're still yeah. manual in, in trying to track it. Right. right. This gives us not just just the catalog of services. Right, it's all audited, right? Now we can go back and see who accessed what data at what time. Right. Cloud. Awesome. Bon, I want to ask you the final question because we're going to I want to talk about kind of a futuristic industry view. Um, AI is the hype right now, augmented intelligence I call it, but yeah, you know, soon artificial sure. intelligence. We're seeing self-driving cars out there. Yeah. Uh, will there be self-driving storage? I mean, I mean literally driving around, <laughs> but I mean, talk about auto provision. We're talking about the ability to just plug something in having machine learning and AI, sure. these kinds of things. Are you guys working on things like that in, in r and I mean, I would imagine a world where ultimately you plug the storage in, magic happens, right. people are programming with it, it's programmable. Where are we on this? What's the vision? So you got to watch out. This is a trick question, right? <laughs> Rule number one from your comms team, don't make news. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say is, yes. is, is, is Again, going back to our pillars uh, in the foundation for Pure, right? How do we help customers put their data to work, right? We make it effortless, efficient, and evergreen. And, and under that effortless piece, right, the big notion with Pure is there's no knobs to turn. And right, so the secret sauce is that I can give you flash performance at disk economics, and guess what? Your virtualization admin can be a storage expert, right? It can get, hit six nines availability without ever reading a manual, right? It's so this is the foundation of what we built with Flash Array, yeah. right? We've now rolled out Flash Blade and, and 
let's just say with our partnership. Uh, you're being, right, a, good, there's, you're there's, being a good spokesperson right now by not trying, <laughs> trying to go to the script. Prashant, we'll go to you because everyone's, <laughs> we know everyone's working on uh, automation, so that's not like a secret. Well, well, the question right. is specific, I don't want to get you in trouble, but the point is, you know, people are looking for, you know, real automation where there's some intelligence, you know, I mean, there's a, that's the trend. I mean, that's, you guys are kind of at the beginning stages of your Correct. relationship that are doing Correct. that now at some right. level, but uh, you know, when's that next level? What's it right. look the, like? The, the heart of automation is building that catalog, where <laughs> <laughs> and, and there it goes in the name of our company, Catalogic. So uh, right. I, I don't want to give any future details yeah. away, uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's where everybody's yeah. going, right? So we, yeah. they, they're all looking for a chatbot or, or an Alexa-like uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, like project. Well, storage as a service is what people say. Tesla's a car. It's not really a car anymore. It's a service. It's a service, it's a, right? Powered so, by software. So, it, so it's like somebody storage. You can almost imagine some product coming out that's very service and connected oriented. Well, yeah, right. look, you know, I, I wasn't <laughs> trying to dodge your question, but know, you know, right. at, at the end of the day, everybody wants to automate their data center. You think you were taking a step further, saying, okay, look, I see frameworks here of what we're talking yeah. about between pure and catalogic. You know, what comes next? You know, we've got a lot of folks that we know in this valley that are working for a number of startups trying to say, hey, how do I bring AI into the data center? I think it's going to be more prevalent over the next four or five years. Let's see how it Okay, so where's the partnership go next? Just we'll kind of end it on that. You guys had a great partnership. Thanks for coming in and sharing yep. the data. But Prashant and, and Vaughn, where does this go next? What happens next? Good integration, what's the next step? So I, I, think, I think customers who are looking at this today, probably the, the, the easiest place to start is to say, I want to automate Oracle and or SQL, mm -hmm. right? Or I want to bring and, and look at reinventing my backup space. I don't want to buy a, a, an appliance. I want just data protection to be part of my ecosystem and cloud right. connected. Where does it go from here? I think we'll see probably an expansion in terms of, uh, of our partnership, right? We, obviously, we've got a new product called Flashblade that, that we want to look at, you know, uh, working on together. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a, some other work that, that we can't announce at this point in time, but if you come to Accelerate, okay. which is our user conference in June, You'll hear about uh, some of the, the new capabilities we're going to bring to market and that we're working on within that ecosystem together as well. Right, so yeah, yeah and, and for us, it goes back to the mission critical databases, so we are expanding our portfolio and adding more databases and, and strengthening our existing database. Expanding the catalog, more expanding microservices oriented, that kind of thing. Exactly, and, and supporting other... Uh, well, uh, you know, key uh, industry applications based on vertical. Yeah. Right, yeah. and, and uh, yeah, more, more tighter integration with uh, existing uh, storage uh, arrays as well as the new Cloud one. is about the data, right? I mean, and the data is where the action is, right? I mean, that's right. the action. Exactly, yeah. and, and, and we are looking at how to extend into the cloud as well, so. All right, Catalogic and Pure here on Inside the Cube Conversation. For Sean Vaughn, thanks for spending the time. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching this Cube Conversation. <laughs>